Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel, and today I'm going to show you how to make a his and hers aluminum lined wood burl. This is uh, called buckeye burl. Out uh, with uh, you know, so aluminum on the inside and buckeye burl on the outside. His and hers matching rings. Pretty cool, huh? Not bad. So this is a fun project, and I'll kind of walk you through the steps. It takes uh, give or take five, six hours or so. Uh, you know, depending on your skill level. Uh, to to uh, kind of knock out both of these. So anyway, here we go. So the first thing we're going to want to do for this project, uh, for his and hers burlwood ring, is you're going to need a uh, a piece of stabilized burlwood, which I have here, and I have a, a couple other blanks. This is resin impregnated, so you won't get any uh, air bubbles or any uh, you know roughness when you cut the wood like normal wood does. You, it's very porous. So start with a impregnated piece. And then uh, what I have here is a, a blank, as is aluminum, just uh, what I happen to have around the shop. That's about the width that I'm going for, uh, but I'm going to have to turn this and make it straight on both sides. So uh, it's a little bit wider than I'm going to be going for. Not much, honestly, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn it down. So there's an aluminum blank. We'll start with that. And uh, here's a suggestion right off the bat, which is make your burlwood piece bigger first right this is this is a kind of i just took it to the sander and sanded off the corners and made it sort of round so it would fit in our our chuck here because what will happen is if you start off with too small of a piece uh the the teeth of the chuck here will clamp your this is what happened the first time you'll clamp it too much and you start working it and all suddenly it just snaps it breaks it here even though this is this is impregnated uh, with resin, it's still fairly brittle, so I have a slightly larger piece that I made here that I cut out. Uh, but it may be easier sometimes just to cut a hole in the big piece, stick your blank in there uh, after you've cut the hole first, stick your blank in there, and then whittle it down, even though you've got like you know half an inch all the way around. That might be easier to do. Uh, so I'm going to show you kind of how I do it, starting with the uh, round aluminum blank for the inner ring part. The first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to face both sides of the material. So I'm just going to go ahead and using a carbide bit. This is probably overkill for using the really soft aluminum that I have in front of me. Uh, but the idea here is that we just want to get both sides of the blank completely straight so that uh, we have a, a you know right angle basically piece to work with. and uh, both sides will, you'll have to do this on both sides. It's not too bad. I'll do some narrating through this. Uh, there might be some blank spaces, I apologize, but uh, hopefully this will help you through the process of you making your own. Alright, so here's the other side, just making sure that both sides are completely straight. Once that's complete, I'm going to take a center boring drill bit in my chuck here. I'm going to punch all the way through to give me some room for my boring bar that you'll see in just a second. A quick suggestion for this is uh, I did not use any cutting fluid, which might have probably would have been a good idea. This is really soft aluminum, remember. Um, uh, the lathe that I have has a pretty touchy auto stop on it. And I, think, I think you'll see it stop here right at the very end. Uh, it's, it's pretty touchy, so backing out a few times would be helpful. And here I'm going to use my boring bar to spread out the hole so that I can fit my finger in there. I'll shut up now because I know some people like to watch this stuff. You can hear the material uh, start whining a bit through the process. Uh, I think my blade is a little bit dull here as you can see and uh, once you start getting kind of into the thinner wall stuff, uh, material doesn't like it a lot. And you'll see it gets real chowdered up, and I have to uh, 
leave a lot of room on the end so that i can sand it down to make it smooth. otherwise it's just going to be all rough and really uncomfortable to wear. so i ended up leaving a fair amount of room on the inside so that i could sand it and make sure that every part was smooth. ah give it a little test fit and you can see it's a little chowder on the inside. nope not not quite enough so we got to go back do it again. um camera didn't pick this up but it's closer to about a mm, nine and a half ten there. Uh, i wear a ten and a half ring so that wasn't going to fit. Uh, here's my uh, adjustable arbor that you make saw me make in the previous video. Uh, you can make your own. It's really easy to do. You know, it took me a couple hours to do it and make sure I got it right. But otherwise, it uh, works out pretty well. And you can see people would ask, "Oh, does it hold the material hard enough? Does it, you know, can you cut with it?" Yes, you can definitely cut with it. Um, give it a, a, a like a, even a quarter or you know half a turn if you really want to get on it. Uh, but even that will hold it just fine to uh, cut with the carbide bits here. So I'll put a link in the description for uh, some of the tools that I've used. Uh, but again, you know, again, carbide might be kind of a, a bit of an overkill here. Uh, high steel, high speed steel would have worked just fine. Um, I'm not quite 100% on if I'm going to make this a full time hobby or not. So I didn't want to go out and spend a bunch of money on super expensive carbide tips so yeah I'm a newbie I understand that so sue me but basically we're just turning down the outside ring to make sure that uh, when we fit the wood over it that it's not going to be a massively thick ring and be uncomfortable so the inner part is going to be relatively thin you have to be aware of that you have to be pretty careful about uh, going too far you go too far and now you've got just a wafer thin uh, inner ring so there's a balance here between how thick you want it to be and kind of how you know, structurally rigid you want it to be too. So just kind of bear that in mind as you're making this. That part I was just cutting off the uh, jagged edge of one side just to make sure it was flat. So now I've got my piece and what i got to do is I have to go in and uh, make sure the inner ring is going to fit the outer part which is the wood and be very very careful here and you'll see why in a minute because you can go way too far very very easily. Uh, this is very sensitive to size and can you can go past it very very quickly so a little tight is okay too tight is not okay and you'll see why in a second uh, but basically you're going to want to go you want to creep up on this really really slowly in very small increments test fitting again and I think after a while, I didn't want to <clears throat> subject you to all of it. I'm pretty darn close here, so I don't want to go too far. So I'm going to make sure that the inside diameter is going to be very, very tight to that outside diameter of that uh, aluminum part. And again, you can make this of any material. This is just the process of being able to you know, marry two materials together. Uh, it can be anything, really, inner or outer. It doesn't really matter. Plastic, metal, gold, silver, yeah, it's all the same. So now that I've got a pretty rough idea of, all right, we're pretty close, we're pretty tight here. Uh, again, uh, I found out the hard way, you'll see. Uh, but now, I'm, now I've am now i got it, it fits. I'm going to pull it out. And what we're going to use is we're going to use some CA glue uh, or cyanoacrylate, aka super glue. I go ahead and scuff up the inner, uh, inner ring so that uh, it'll accept some of the glue. And just double check on the fit. It's a little tight, but I can sand some of that. That's okay. I got plenty of material to sand off. Uh, work quickly because the CA glue is uh, very, very quick to dry. 
and you can get it all over your fingers, and I did, and I ended up gluing my, my finger to the actual material more than once, so I recommend doing this on the lathe instead of in your hand, but you do have to you know run a, a bit of glue, shove the inner blank in there. Now here's the problem, it was too tight. Remember how I told you it was really sensitive to inner and outer diameters? Well, I pushed it in there, pushed a little too tight, and I screwed up. So here's my second attempt. Remember how in, in the earlier video I said you might want to use a thicker wall material, which is what I'm doing. So same exact process. I I uh, just used more meat basically on the wood. It's uh, This fit in a little bit easier this time because what happened was I uh, tried to push it too hard. I pushed too hard and ended up snapping the wood in half and ended up gluing the <laughs> ended up gluing the ring uh, to the broken wood. That, so that was broken. So here's what you get. This is kind of, like I said, you see a huge amount of material on the outside, but that's fine. That's all going to come off anyway. This gives you lots of room to play with things and to machine it down to the exact size you want. So you, you waste a lot more material, but to, in the end, you end up getting a piece that, you know, really allows you more working room. And if you get really good at it, I'm sure you could, you know, get really good at uh, making sure that those sizes are perfectly right and you cut them out and you waste, you don't waste as much time. But, um, you know, in, in the end, sometimes you just, you got to break some eggs to make an omelet. So here I am just kind of turning down the... Uh, wood to get it to a, a rough shape. Now, just like the interior part, I left a little bit of room for me to sand, and same with the uh, exterior here, wood. I'm going to leave a fair chunk of material so that I can shape it the way I want. I, would, I do want a small bevel on each edge, and it's really, really subtle, especially when you look at it. It almost looks flat, but the edges are curved just a smidge to make it a little bit more comfortable to wear, and I've been wearing this ring for I don't know, a couple of weeks now, and uh, I will say it is, it's pretty comfortable to wear, and I've, I've gotten it um, to where it's easy to come on and off, but it doesn't fly off your hand, so again, here's that adjustable arbor I showed you about, and uh, now I've got it to kind of a rough idea, and you still see there's plenty of meat on there, plenty of room for me to sand down, the interior is rough, it does fit my finger, it's a smidge tight for me, but that's okay, because we're going to sand it down. And uh, we're just going to you know, double check for fit and, and uh, kind of check progress as we're going. A little bit extra material there. We're going to run that down on the lathe, no problem. Oh, that stuff you saw me spray earlier was uh, uh, glue uh, accelerant. So I just you make one couple sprays and then it... Uh, hardens the glue really quickly and also smells really good too. I was pleasantly surprised it didn't have a gluey smell. What I'm doing here is I'm just facing that one side of the ring because I had some jagged edges and I just kind of run it down to where uh, now we've got a flat edge. I do that on both sides too so now we have a perfectly square piece to work with. Okay, so now I've got the ring itself in the chuck. Now, I probably should have uh, used some uh, tape or something to do that, but I've got it on a fairly low speed, and I'm basically I'm just I'm starting off with a really, really aggressive grit, like a 180, and then I'm going to progressively work up to like a 240, 400, 800, that, uh, you know, 1200, just to make sure I get it perfectly smooth, because uh, once, once I do kind of the final process, I, I don't show the final process, which is uh, I put a little bit of CA glue on the inside. Now that will make the inner diameter relatively smaller, a, a smidge smaller, uh, which is good for sizing purposes, but also because aluminum against your skin will leave black marks. So if you've got it covered in something like CA glue, for example, uh, it won't leave any marks at all. It feels kind of plasticky. And um, yeah, just won't, won't discolor your your finger and and in the end looks better uh, looks shiny and everything so I've got it relatively where it's smooth on the inside I beveled the inside edges with a with the sandpaper uh, and it looks you know feels pretty good at this point so I think kind of the next step is, is uh, now that we're on to like uh, yeah and I, I think I'm here I'm like a 1200 grit uh, to where it's 
you know, we're, we're going to polish here in just a second. So yeah, we've got 12, 1500 grit, kind of progressive, and you can start to see the shine starting to come out in aluminum. Brushed aluminum is a good look, too. Uh, I was going for more of a mirror finish on the inside. So uh, go ahead and clean out that stuff because uh, we don't want to polish in little bits of metal. That would make things a heck of a lot worse. So I'm just going to use uh, some white polish here. I'm just going to use white and then I'm going to use Jeweler's Rouge at the very end. But you can see kind of the, the dramatic difference once you use both of these polishes. This is on a Dremel wheel with uh, wool pads on it. Again, put, I'll put a link to the description to all this stuff. So if you guys want to get it for yourself. And it'll turn black. And I will say this, uh, once it turns black, you kind of know it's working. That's the that's the material starting to work its way in and out of the, the aluminum. So don't worry if it turns black. The second you wipe that off, instant results. You'll see it. And you can already start to see it's a little bit shinier. Now I'm going to follow that up with some... Uh, Red Jeweler's Rouge. Sometimes the uh, pad didn't want to take some, so you have to be a little bit more aggressive with it. You start to see the shine on the inside, too. It's getting pretty nice. Once you've got that down, you're going to pull the material out and just make sure. You're going to have to do both sides as well. I did uh, you know, the majority of it. so But yeah, microfiber cloth, wipe it up. You'll see the inside of it start to look like much more like a mirror finish. Looks nice. Looks pretty nice from this from this vantage point. Again, we're going to coat this in CA. Got to do the other side like I point to there. Um, but now that I've done the other side, now, now it's time to address the outside of it. So again, start with a fairly aggressive you know, 240, uh, and then kind of get the rough shape of what I want. Small bit of a taper on each side, so it's flat at top and taper on each side. This is just for shaping, and then we're going to work our way down from, like a like I said, 240 to 400, and then once we like what we get, we're gonna, we'll move up to 800,000, probably 1,200. Uh, get the wood to to really start to come out that color, because right now it looks pretty dull and it's got a lot of sanding marks on it and stuff. So we'll we'll polish it up. You'll see at the very end, it looks pretty good. You might be asking why I didn't speed this part up. I know some people like to watch this stuff. Uh, it is, I'll be honest, it is pretty relaxing and... Uh, you know, kind of calming to me to do this because it is kind of very small, detailed work. And again, you'll start to see that, that small little taper that I put on there. It looks pretty good. Now, this is a pretty wide ring. I, I wanted a wide ring that's just kind of the size I wanted it. Your size will totally depend on what, what it is you're going for. But uh, yeah, just the process itself can be pretty helpful. Uh, it's relaxing. It's, it's detail work. So yeah, I left it in here just because I... Kind of like to watch it myself. Now we're now we're down to like I think this is either a 400 or 600 at this point. So we're, the chips you can see flying off it are a lot smaller. Beware, this will get really, really hot in your hand, so uh, whatever material you're using for your sandpaper, make sure you move it around, because otherwise it's going to burn your hand. This is, it got red hot at one point, where I couldn't even touch it. So then we're going to move on to another uh, sand, uh, more, less aggressive sandpaper. We're just going to progressively work our way down. Again, this is, this is where it starts to get into the really delicate work, where you can easily, you know, overdo it. So be careful. This is me just handing the edges, the inside and outside edge. So again, this is a, so there'll be a, more of a comfort fit. Be, the, the idea is to make this comfortable and not cumbersome to wear. We don't want it to be uncomfortable. So I, you can start to see the wood starting to pop now that we've started to polish it a little bit. 
here we go, 1,000. Now we're in 1,000 grit. We're getting into our fine sand. So we've got the basic shape down and going to work our way into making it look pretty. Yeah, that's where it got hot on my hand. <laughs> I, can, I can see. I think finally I, I'm, I probably hit this with a 1500 grid at the end too. Yeah, there's the 1500 right there. You can tell how fine it is. Reminds me of a joke. If you're... You ever, uh, as it's a, you know, when somebody says, oh, that's, that's really nice. You say, well, it's, it's as fine as frog's hair. He goes, what do you mean frog's hair? He says, you ever seen a hair on a frog? He says, no, pretty fine, isn't it? <laughs> I had a coworker who used to say that old joke. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm just using, uh, the white polish again here on the outside and you'll start to see it, uh, wood changes color, starts to accept some of the, the polish a little bit. And I do want to preface this by saying you can do a number of things here. You can do linseed oil. You know, once you've got it polished to a high polish, you can do uh, linseed oil. You can do beeswax. Um, I left it blank at the end. I did not do anything because I kind of allow you to do whatever it is you want to do. I, however, did a number of coats of CA glue, which uh, is pretty resistant. I mean, I'm pretty hard on my rings. And what I have found is that material uh, is is smooth, number one, uh, is really glossy, and gives a nice shine to it and a depth to the wood that you normally wouldn't get with linseed oil or beeswax. So that's what I did on this one. That's what I did on both rings. Put a little, uh, about 10 or 12 layers of CA glue now, before you do that, make sure the ring is darn near perfect. And you can kind of tell here, we're, we're pretty close to done. You know, it looks really good. There's a couple more steps I do to really bring out the depth of the wood. Uh, but this is pretty darn close, pretty darn close to the final process. I do use some Jewelers Rouge. Uh, tw I do it twice just because, um, I don't know, I'm a madman and I enjoy those sorts of things. But you can, you can if you want, uh, do CA. I, that's what I did. I did CA glue and uh, make sure that everything is 100% perfect because once you put the CE glue in, it locks it in place and you will not be able to go back and fix it unless you want to sand it all the way down and do it all over again. So it will pick up every scratch and every nuance. So make sure it's perfect before you cover it in CA glue. Now you can really start to see the shine come out. Looks really good, I think. I'm gonna unlock it from our ring holder, our adjustable mandrel, and you can see inside and outside are pretty attractive at this point. I'm gonna polish it up a little bit, move my camera, and gonna wipe away some of the the grit there, but. Uh, really starts to bring out the color of the wood. It looks really nice. The the grain is really cool in this burl wood. The uh, buckeye burl uh, has a pretty cool color structure. And then I'm just going to hit it one final time before I coat it in CA glue just to be, you know, just kind of overkill. But if, if you're going to do something, I say, hey, overdo it, right? So I did it again. Hit the ring one final time with uh, the red compound and um, again your choice on finishes wood oil or CA glue like I did but definitely put the CA glue or some sort of protectant on the inside otherwise aluminum will turn your finger colors uh, if you don't want that use a stainless steel uh, interior that's totally fine too but otherwise I hope this was helpful hit the subscribe down at the button at the bottom and the like and doing all the things you got to do but hey thanks for your time hope this was helpful and enjoy your projects guys